A hard drive has an average lifespan of only five years, so the question really isn't if but when it will fail. Hey what's up, I'm Johannes and in this video I want to talk about my backup workflow. A couple of months ago I wanted to access a photo on my hard drive and when I plugged the hard drive in I noticed that it wasn't working and I did some research and apparently it's broken, there's not much you can do. While there are possibilities to recover data from hard drives, it's very expensive. I lost a lot of data, I lost, all my, I lost my entire movie collection, I lost a lot of my photos. And luckily there wasn't anything really important on it, so the damage was limited. But it still showed me that I really have to do something and improve my backup workflow, so that when I have more important data, I make sure that it doesn't get lost. So I did some research and built a whole new backup workflow that I will show you in this video. And hopefully this will help you so you don't end up in the situation that I was in. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. The backup strategy that I am following is called the 3 to one strategy. It's a very simple but effective backup strategy and I think it was invented by a photographer a while ago and it's become somewhat of a best practice for backing up photos and other data. It's called the 3 to one strategy because of every file you have three copies stored on two different types of media and at least one of the copies has to be off-site, so away from your home. So now I will go over each of these points. First, you want to have three copies of each file. So if you have one original file on your computer, you want to have two additional copies. The reason for that is that any hard drive or any other type of storage media will sooner or later fail. So if you have only one copy and your hard drive fails, everything is lost. That's what happened to me. But the risk that two hard drives fail at the same time is much smaller. But it's still realistic, so you want to add an additional copy because it's very unlikely that three copies will fail at the same time. It all really comes down to math. Let's hypothetically say that the risk that a hard drive fails is 100 to 1. Then the risk that two hard drives fail at the same time is 10,000 to 1. And the risk that three hard drives fail at the same time is 1 million to 1. So you see there's a big difference between just having one hard drive and having two hard drives or having three hard drives. The second part of the 3 to 1 strategy is to have copies on two different types of media or two different storage devices. That's because the same types of media also have similar lifespans. So for example, if you have two hard drives that both have an average lifespan of five years, the risk that these two hard drives fail at exactly the same time is a lot higher than if they were two different types of storage media with different average lifespans. So to minimize the risk, we want to use different types of storage media. So for example, you could have the original copy on your PC and two additional copies on external hard drives. But in this case, either the hard drive on your PC or one of the external hard drives should be an SSD and not an HDD, so that there are actually different types of storage media. The third part of the 3 to 1 strategy is to have one off-site copy. That means that you should have at least one copy that is stored not at your home. If all your copies are stored in one place, there's always the risk that all of them get lost at the same time. For example, if there's a fire at your house, then everything is lost at once. Even if you have three copies and two different devices, they can still get lost at the same time. So it's very useful to have at least one copy off-site so that if something happens, you still have that one copy left. For example, you could have an external hard drive that you store with friends or with family or in a bank safe if, they are very, if there's very important data on them. But one of the easiest solutions is probably to use a cloud service. I already mentioned that it's useful to have at least two different types of storage devices. There are countless different options of media you could use and they all have their different pros and cons. So what you use really depends on your individual needs. I will now go over some of the most popular options that you should consider. The first option that you should consider are hard drives, specifically HDD hard drives. They are probably the most common type of storage device, almost everyone has one. And their biggest advantage is their price. They are very cheap. Their cost per terabyte is really unbeatable. They have a relatively short lifespan when they are in constant use of only about five years, but their lifespan is actually pretty good when they are archived. That means if you don't constantly plug them in and out of computers and they are stored in a safe place, their lifespan actually goes up a lot. One of the problem with hard drives is that they contain a lot of moving parts. So they are very sensitive to many external influences like humidity, vibration, impact, and that means that careful storage is really important for hard drives. When you use hard drives for archiving, it's important to know that the data stored on hard drives actually gets weaker over time. So it's important that you refresh the data every one to three years. The next option I want to talk about is flash memory. So USB sticks and SSD drives. One of the biggest drawbacks of flash memory is that it has limited write cycles. That means that you can write new data on it only a limited number of times. 
that usually isn't a problem when you are using it for archiving or even for smaller everyday data. But if you are a filmmaker or photographer and you have terabytes of raw footage that you are constantly moving around, then this can really become a problem. Just as normal hard drives, they also should be refreshed every once in a while to make sure that the data is still safely stored. Another disadvantage of flash memory that is that it's still very expensive. Compared to HDD hard drives, the cost per terabyte is still really high. That isn't that much of a problem for the average consumer who has only a few photos and a couple of text files, but it becomes a bigger problem for people like filmmakers and photographers who have very large amounts of data to store. The next storage device I want to talk about are optical discs, especially Blu-ray discs and M-discs. Blu-ray discs are not only for watching movies, then they can also be really useful as storage devices for archiving all types of media. The biggest argument for Blu-ray discs and M-discs is their lifespan. A Blu-ray disc has an average lifespan of 50 years, an M-disc has an average lifespan of 1000 years. So that's really perfect for archival purposes. One big drawback, however, is that the volume per disc is very limited. Usually you can store only 25 to 50 gigabytes per disc, which is not much compared to hard drives where you can easily store multiple terabytes of data. Also, the writing speed is very slow. That means that optical discs are great for archiving, but again are not very suited for large amounts of data like, like raw footage and videos. Optical discs are also sensitive to external influences like light and scratching, so careful storage is very important. It's important to mention that if you want to use optical discs, you will need a reader so you can use them. Some computers have them built in, but you can also buy external ones. The last storage device I want to talk about is cloud storage. There are countless different options like Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Amazon Drive and Dropbox and they are really uncomplicated to use. They also are relatively safe because these companies all use professional backup systems, so the risk that the data gets lost is very small. However, it is not zero because due to hacking or companies going bankrupt, the data can still be lost, but the risk is relatively small. Cloud storage allows you to access your data worldwide, so wherever in the world you are, all you need is an internet connection and you can access all your data, which can be very useful, especially if you are traveling a lot. Often these services also allow automated backups and it's very easy to share data with clients or colleagues or friends, which is also very useful. Most cloud services are free at first, but they can get really expensive if you have larger amounts of data. Many of these services have long-term contracts with monthly payments. If you are using cloud services, you also rely on a stable internet connection and on a fast internet connection, especially if you are using a cloud service for storing photos or videos, you need a really fast internet connection. And usually the upload speed is really slow. So again, if you are using it for photos and videos, it can just be too slow. When it comes to cloud services, many people also have privacy and security concerns. If you are storing important data on the cloud, you are always more vulnerable to things like hacking, espionage and data sharing than if they were on a private hard drive at your home. So the cloud can be very useful, especially for small amounts of data, but it can get really expensive and really complicated if you want to use it for larger amounts of data. I created a table where I compare the most common types of storage devices. So if you want to take a screenshot of it, you can hit pause now. If you want, you can download it for free. There's a link in the description. Now I briefly want to show you my personal setup that I use to back up my files. I have copies of all my raw files and the converted JPEG images on two separate HDD hard drives. In addition, I have the JPEG versions of all my favorite images on Google Drive. I'm still using the free version of Google Drive, but in the future I plan on switching to using M-Discs instead, just because I don't want to be dependent on Google too much. For important documents, I use a different setup. For example, right now I'm writing my bachelor's thesis, so I have copies of all the files related to it on my computer, on a USB stick, on an external HDD hard drive and on Google Drive. So I have four copies on four different types of storage media and one of them off-site. If you have any questions, just write them down in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I see you in the next video.